This video is brought to you by Lucy. Stick around to hear more about the discount that they're offering to the entire UEG community. Also, the video is available completely ad-free in an audio podcast form on Locals.com. It's a way to support the channel beyond YouTube and give much more stability in terms of revenue, as well as my entire content library being up on Odyssey, which is a YouTube platform alternative. For those who want to check it out, links are down below in the description. Okay, today I need to evaluate a Twitter trend because it was patently false fear-mongering drivel, which was seemingly ignored by the official sources of Twitter, maybe because it pertained to direct competition for them, and the hysteria around this completely manufactured lie spread like wildfire to a point where I even had friends of mine messaging in fear that I should take precautions because I was at risk for having opened a Parler account. No, wrong. Let's dig in. Parler is a Twitter alternative. It's basically just the conservative offshoot of the popular social media platform, and it's currently dominated by political discourse, specifically from a right-wing perspective. I have posted a grand total of one time on the entire platform. The site claims to be a free speech haven, but I see them engaging in a lot of the same behavior that early Twitter did as well, just from a different ideological angle. However, that's not the point. I don't want to derail here. The point is, apparently, last night, Parler was hacked. Except, it wasn't. Most of this was driven by a Twitter thread from the user Contented Indie. No idea who they are, no idea why anyone even took them seriously, but hey, it's Twitter. Logic has pretty much left the building entirely. I'll read the thread fully so you can gauge for yourself and see the real-time pivots and backpedals. Oh my god. Parler required users to give their social security numbers, and now they've been hacked. This is the biggest effing grift I've ever seen. I knew these people were stupid, but my god, they gave their SSN because Twitter mods were meanies to them. To be clear, the signup did not require the SSN already, already pivoting and backtracking, to access certain functions of the site did. This is so effing insane. I don't know how the F one legally asks their user base for SSN as a conditional on accessing site function. If you don't know that, just get off the internet. You don't have any place here. Just fucking be gone. Because that, if you don't understand that basic principle, okay, wow. But that's not even the craziest part. They effing agreed to it. Dude, they effing created the site off of the WordPress system. Even verified user had to turn over their social security number and driver's license ID to get verified. Dude, this is like a massive criminal enterprise for fraud. How on earth did they agree to this S? This is literally the 21st century version of Tom Sawyer making that kid paint the fence for free. My god. Dude, how many effing times did our parents and grandparents warn us about identity theft and then a ton of them go and do this S? Jesus Christ, we had PSAs on this. I, I'm, I can't even avoid all the curse words. We had PSAs on this shit, man. What the F y'all doing? Okay, so here's a big update because someone just informed me of this. There's been two hacks of the site, one from over the summer and one today. Unclear which is which. It looks like the WordPress thing is from over the summer and we don't know the scope of the new hack yet. This will be my semi-final tweet in this thread as this has gotten way too big for me to deal with. One, Parler was breached in July. Two, there are reports of it being hacked again tonight. Three, in contradiction of my previous tweet, the site was not based off WordPress, it seems. Four, Parler acted extraordinarily unethically and possibly criminally by asking for ID and SSN of their users, and the whole damn site is sketchy as hell. Final, final tweet. There is a lot of conflicting information going around about the hacks and the timeframes of the hacks, so I'm not going to be speaking any more about this in case there was no recent hack. The SSN thing, though, is effing egregious. So there it is. This is... Idiot somehow managed to kick off an actual trending hashtag, or maybe they weren't the first one, but they pretty broadly facilitated it, which got perpetuated and parroted all across social media, leading users to believe that A, Parler required your social security number, B, it was hacked and everyone's info is out in the wild, C, it's based on WordPress and had been hacked before, that's where the water gets muddy for many people, they didn't read all the way down to the part where the user was like, oh wait, I'm absolutely wrong, and D, it's insane that they require your info, this is horrifying. All wrong, all of it's wrong. Not just wrong, mentally deficient when you take the time to actually analyze any of the information available. Before going further, it's time to discuss today's video sponsor, Lucy. Lucy is on a mission to reduce the harmful effects of tobacco by providing better alternatives to smoking and vaping. It was founded by two Caltech scientists who felt that modern tobacco alternatives weren't really making the cut, so they worked together and produced a longer-lasting nicotine alternative in three different flavors, wintergreen, pomegranate, and cinnamon, called Lucy Chew and Park. 
Head on over to lucy.co, that's lucy.co, to check it out. The mission is to reduce net tobacco-related harm to zero, offering better alternatives in the form of nicotine gum. Also, it offers a great buzz without any secondhand smoke whatsoever or the side effects, after effects of clothing and personal belongings reeking of cigarettes after stepping outside for a smoke. Use code UEG to get 20% off all products at lucy.co. Again, that's code UEG to get 20% off at lucy.co. Big thank you to them for sponsoring the channel. Warning, this product does contain nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Here's the really sad part, like the really sad part. This collective freakout, or rather fraudulent attempt to berate and demean conservatives, gloating that their social security numbers and other information might have been compromised, is still happening. A lot of it is residual traffic due to tweets like this from Coping MAGA, which directly show the WordPress-based archive from July, and yet Twitter has done nothing with their hacked information policies. Go figure. But even better, Parler isn't even based on WordPress. In a statement given by Parler CEO John Matz, we can see the following, quote, The alleged hack is a screenshot from a WordPress website that has been circulated repeatedly over the past six months, despite Parler's multiple responses that we do not use WordPress products nor WordPress databases. All of our databases are hidden behind multiple layers of security and are not accessible via the web. This is an irresponsible rumor which uses a techie looking WordPress config file, which is only capable of confusing a journalistic hack, not an actual hacker. If Twitter continues to fact check others, they should also fact check posts such as these that spread viral misinformation, end quote. And that right there could not be more accurate. Twitter fancies themselves to be the arbiter of online truth and justice, warping their policy to engage in partisan acts of throttling and censorship. But when it comes to obviously fake information trending about a competitor who is taking a large chunk out of their market share currently, mum's the word. They didn't see or say anything. But it gets so much better because apparently lefties on Twitter don't even understand how basic online business operates. Remember that most of this hysteria traces back to a requirement of the user's social security number and government issued ID? Well, for one, the requirement for your social security for a basic account is not true. The requirement of your social for being verified is not true. And while it can be said that they ask for a scanned copy of identification, government issued identification, their policy clearly dictates that beyond the scenario where that identification is matched to you so as to provide verification of identity for other purposes, it isn't even stored on their servers. Furthermore, think of what that really means. Verification of identity. The whole concept is to prove that you are the person you say you are. So how do they do that without, go figure, ID of some kind? And the equivalent that we can look to is a Twitter blue check mark, which does not require that someone scan their identification cards, but is preserved behind a nebulous line of status and often gets handed down to those who are part of existing organizations where that organization presumably did actually do the ID checks and has their social and all sorts of things or have ascended to public stardom so large that verification of their identity becomes a process that would go through agencies or managers. But the best part, the truly best part of all this, comes when we dive into the social security thing and read the parlor terms of service. Section A, information you provide to us, quote, registration and profile information. When you sign up for an account, we may collect information such as your name, email address, username, and profile photo. Influencer network information. If you choose to join our influencer network, we may ask for information that can be used to verify your identity, such as a copy of your government issued photo identification. There it is. And information that can be used to facilitate the redemption of virtual items or payments, such as your social security number, SSN, or your tax identification number. We delete your government issued photo identification information when it is no longer necessary to verify your identity. End quote. If that doesn't make any sense to you, just try reading it again. For the purposes of redeeming virtual items or payments, they collect your social security number or your tax identification number. Parler has an ecosystem that allows money to flow through their systems and be paid to influencers and public figures via their platform. When you sign up for a website that facilitates payments to you from them, you need to provide, brace yourselves, a tax identification number. It just so happens that for most people, especially when operating as an individual, that number is their social security number. As an example, and this really should prove my point, hopefully, for I don't even know how all of this got trending in the first place, but here we are. For me, my example here, I have a limited liability company with an EIN or a TIN, employer identification number, tax identification number. I have a number assigned to my company for the purposes of taxes, employees, all that stuff. 
That EIN is what I give to any third party that asks for a tax identification number. And I have given that, I've, okay, there's a long list here. I have given that to Twitch, YouTube, Google, Amazon, Stripe, PayPal, Curse, and I don't even know how many others. Individual sponsors, quite a few of them. Awin, I think is one of them. Brand agencies, uh, quite a few of those, you name it. The reason is simple. You need to be in the system for the purposes of tax write-offs, document filings, all sorts of stuff, depending on what you sign. Are you an independent contractor? They're paying stuff to you. Does it go through them? Like there's an innumerable number of things. There's a whole bunch of other 100% normal, exceedingly common reasons. But somehow because Parler does it, it's horrible and bad and they're taking your social security number. So suck it, conservatards, you got hacked. The reality is most people just use their social as a tax ID number. It's not smart, it's not a great thing to do, but that's just where we're at. And to pretend this is anything other than routine, standard, and normal is like tattooing, I'm an idiot on your forehead. Bottom line, there was no parlor hack. What we saw was a few Twitter users frothing at the mouth for something to make fun of, owing to the fact that parlor, despite how unappealing I personally find it to be right now, is finding relative success in a way that they probably didn't expect or desire, and they seized on something that is not only outdated, but false and fabricated, while making up an entire slew of claims that demonstrate a complete and total lack of literacy, competence, and basic business acumen, which then spiraled out of control and went viral on Twitter, scaring a great many people into thinking that their social security numbers and other personal information was out in the wild and accessible, which for the moment, there is absolutely zero evidence of. I don't use Parler. I made an account. It did not ask me for my social. I posted one time and now it's untouched because I don't like it. There is nothing to point towards a hack yesterday, literally nothing. Just a bunch of mentally deficient Twitter users circulating info from July that cannot even apply to Parler. It's literally impossible. You are safe, things are fine. Just be careful with your passwords and if you are truly terrified of a basic business entity having your social security number, start a company, get an EIN, and you're good. That's it. If you want support, links are down below. Merch, Locals, Lucy, and Odyssey, as well as another gaming YouTuber to check out, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.